Good morning, folks. Switcher here. And what does Switcher have in store for you? Grab yourself a cup of coffee and enjoy. Um, I get several questions, okay, via PM or in the remarks and so on. And uh, this is, uh, so today we're going to cover that. And before we get into that, uh, I got a later disclaimer, okay. This is not the holy grail of anything, okay. It's just the way I do things. And it is what it is. <laughs> So what are we looking at, Switcher? Well, in the Frugal Model, and I'll post a link in the description, it was, uh, you know, I do with a lot of uh, recycle, reuse, and repurpose, and so on and so forth, and this is a prime example of that, okay? Here's my desk, okay, uh, that you see, and I pull my shelf out, and my tripod normally sits here with the camera. With the uh, the two white boards here on each side and the gray board held up against the shelf in the background and it, it does the stuff. Um, I come to find out that uh, I got to play a little bit more with my white balance and gain now because I dropped this shelf in order to fit this unit in there that's up there and we're going to see that in a minute. Folks asked me a long time ago, what do what should I do? What should I carry? Let's say on my ATV, whenever. Well, outside of some of the basics, okay. Let your needs identify what you're going to do with your vehicle. And that's exactly what I did here, okay, with this bench, okay. Uh, we have all my tools at the back. We got my paintbrushes over there, a bunch of nicks and knacks and, and so on and so forth, okay. And that's just what makes me comfortable. Uh, moving on up through the sky to a deluxe apartment. Oh, we're, you know, wrong show. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the original video of this was a little uh, <laughs> zoomed in too much. We can zoom in, but I mean, it's not about that. So this shelf used to be bare, and there was all kinds of stuff accumulated on it. Uh, there was a lot of large containers, like uh, something like this, okay? Uh, they were all up here and up there, and I got rid of that in another storage place and just kept the ready-use stuff uh, handy. A lot of my stuff was in uh, these little plastic trays, and I had about, uh, I think I recycled seven of them <laughs> from this bench back to, uh, for future use. Uh, this was a rack that I had. It's, uh, it's a tattooer's uh, ink stand, okay? Uh, I don't know. Um, I use that in my e-cig business, okay? That's where I, uh, all my uh, li uh, bottles of liquid. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's good for, uh, da, 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 I think it was 60 bottles of ink or some of that. Uh, we can get 55 bottles of, uh, of paint in there. This used all to be in trays, okay? These little trays, and it was a paint in the patootie, okay? This is my weathering station now, okay? And it's quick and handy, and here I have, so I got turpentine, I got uh, thinner, I got X28, and in the back over here, I got my cleaner. This section right here, if I put my arrow in it like that, to the left of the arrow is the rust section, okay? And we'll cover that later on in the next video. Well, the same video, but I mean, the next segment of this particular video. Uh, all my washes are up there. We got some AK stuff, uh, some um, in the back here, some, uh, I wouldn't call them insignificant, but they're... There are washes that I don't use very often, okay? But uh, here's uh, the washes I use a lot. Of course, we got our CA glue and so on and so forth. Our decal setting solution, Microsoft Crystal Clear, and uh, Bob's your uncle. And uh, we'll zoom up to the top, okay? Uh, now, I've, by putting that rack there, I've cleared up a lot of space. And the camera, when we see the overhead shot, normally sits here, okay? And uh, when I do... Uh, you see my puss, okay, uh, this is where the camera is sitting. We've got some storage bins up top, okay. And the top shelf once upon a time, okay, and let's zoom in on that. Carried all my, uh, that was my library, okay. My library became uh, way too big, and it weighted down. And you can see some of the shelves are bowed, and I used to flip them over and all that. Uh, that's just... It's the shelf queens that are sitting up there, <laughs> okay? But uh, stand by, folks. Uh, we are going to get into the meat and potatoes of this particular video. We're back. Okay, and uh, folks have seen this before, okay? And it's, there's a reason why uh, it is sitting there. And like I said in the first video and then on the intro to this video, uh, big disclaimer, this is just how... I do things, okay? This chart, as far as I'm concerned, 
okay? <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, okay? Uh, it's uh, Windsor Newton because, uh, A, their paints uh, are, uh, are cost-effective. But as we go up the chart there, you see the different nuances, the different tonal value. I went through this chart before, but this uh, video is totally new, okay? Uh, on a request uh, from uh, one of my uh, subscribers that absolutely loved uh, the side-by-side, -side, okay, of my latest video, which was uh, not all gunmetals are created the same. And this is why uh, we have to go back to basics, okay? And like I discussed in that video, everybody's colorblind to some degree or another. Now, we if you think you're not colorblind, it's because you haven't been challenged in a colorblind test, okay? Uh, a lot of people do not differentiate between uh, certain colors, like my buddy the electrician, which was uh, purple, grays, and browns. He saw different shades of those colors, but he couldn't say that uh, between... He could not pick the purple and the gray, for example, okay? between the two, to them they were two grays, okay, for the lack of a better word, but they had two different nuances, so he was able to splice his, his cable. These are, this particular chart comes from Winter Newton's, okay, and this is an accurate uh, uh, depiction of their colors, and not only that, the value of their colors, in, in other words, of how thick you make them, and so on and so forth, and I found that, um, I have a lot of aha moments, <laughs> You know, uh, when I looked at oil washes, there was not a lot there, and then somebody, uh, it was Cone that explained uh, his oil washes and so on, and he mixed them at 10%, and, and then there was some 20%, and so on and so forth, and I'm going like, okay, well, that's nice. Well, uh, this one here, if you're looking for a particular value on the chart, especially when we get down in the browns and the reds and all that kind of it is stuff down there, okay, 10%, what is it, what is the color going to look like, okay? And you may adjust it a little bit, but anyways, you know where I'm coming from, and of course, oil colors are forgiving in that with a little bit of freaking turpentine, okay, what do we call this, turpenoid or odorless turpentine or white spirits or whatever, it's turpentine, okay, and uh, is the, the cutting medium, okay, for oil paints, always has been, okay, and uh, uh, most artists have moved away and are now using odorless turpentine, but uh, there's other ways uh, to work around that in, with frugality. But uh, nonetheless, then you come in with a, a, a nor I, I wouldn't call it a dry brush, it's a wet brush, but it's a clean brush with uh, uh, almost like a dry brush, and you, you can remove some of these layers to get the tonal value that you want, okay? Now, so we have the Windsor-Newton chart. Now, when we discuss the gun metals, okay, and I pulled out my charts, and because uh, I have them all here, okay, and... Uh, in my humble opinion, okay, you don't have to do it, but it is what it is, okay? This is my advice, okay? And uh, we're all free men, and we, we can do whatever voodoo we want to do, and uh, that's cool with me. I mean, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Uh, here was Model Master, okay? And uh, this is my daily chart. I don't know what the camera is going to pick up here. I'm going to try to put the colors there side by side and uh, see what the, the camera will pick up. Okay, there we go. Now, why I say photo glossy paper, because that is the paint. Now, you can get a matte finish if you want. But I want you to draw, I want to draw your attention. Let's get some light on the subject there. And the autofocus ain't working, okay, very well on my camera anymore. And so we're in, if things don't appear. But I want to draw your attention to this color, Okay. Uh, I'm reading upside down, so it's not um, easy. Now, this is straight printer paper. This is glossy paper. This is the color. Okay? This is because uh, paper absorbs, and this doesn't. This is the true color. And these are in a protective sleeve that I have on my desk, okay? And this just happens to be Model Master. It's not the entire series, okay? So we're not going to go there. We're going to get into that in a minute, okay? But um, I have them all, okay, for... Uh, uh, we have the Rebels, and this just happens to be the enamel colors, okay? Uh, I do have Vallejo, okay? And uh, and so we got Vallejo, 
and uh, we got uh, Hobby Color. We got Mr. Color. Okay. And we have uh, Tamiya's. Okay. Now, like I said, those are in a protective sleeve that I refer to. Okay. Uh, when need be. But most of the time I refer to uh, this chart, okay, for a quick reference. And when I do need the actual comparison, okay, in, in, in real time, because you see there's a stain there and so on and so forth, uh, I use my glossy ones, okay, to get an accurate color, especially if I'm looking for a color. So uh, that is that. Now, something that uh, I have uh, done for myself. Okay, I'm an old fart. I also suffer from Gulf War Syndrome. My short-term memory is the shits. And that is a side effect of the first Gulf War. It is what it is. It's the pill they fed us, okay, as a uh, prophylactic against the nerve agent, okay? And uh, it didn't affect everybody, but it affect. Uh, you know, it, depend it depends on the individual. Okay, so... This is a little book, okay, that I've created that um, all kinds of notes, okay, from uh, tips and tricks from uh, from modelers out there, like paint mixes, how they achieve a certain color and all that. And it's great when they come down and say so many drops of this or so much percentage of that. And, and that's why I use my measuring cups that, I, that you've seen before. So in this book, okay, uh, what we see here, uh, we got a here antenna whips, okay, to scale. This is just my shopping list when I go down to the store, okay, what I have to pick up and so on and so forth. Of course, we have our index, and we start off here, so we get all our scales, okay, and different different things. Um, it's my notebook, okay, there's all my scales. But most importantly, okay, is that the color uh, charts that you did not see me, uh, <clears throat> these, are the, these are the paints that are available at my model store, and these are the paints that I use. Okay, it, it is what it is, but they're in there. So if they don't have something and I'm looking for something, well, I have my reference uh, right there. Okay, there's my Tamiya's, and uh, we go into Model Master and so on and so forth. What else is in this notebook? There we go. Okay, it's there. There's my Newton chart. And I went through this Newton chart to create my own. Uh, rust washes, okay, uh, with the assistance of Michael Rinaldi in with Tank Art 3. And once I get the full set, we'll do the review on those books. A lot of good information in those books. Like I said, uh, folks did not like uh, my review of uh, uh, Vol 4, okay? And it, a review is not what it is. Okay, it's nice. This is the book. He's got some nice pictures and all that good stuff. Pros and cons. Allow the viewer to decide if it's worth his, his money. You know, considering, like I said uh, uh, in my last channel update, what's 260 some odd dollars, okay, for all four volumes shipped to Canada. Uh, that's a fair hunk of change, okay? And here we go wire drill sizes, okay, made up the charts and so on and so forth. Uh, Panzer uh, gray scuffs or whatever. Uh, the various um, kits available, okay, from the AFV Club and all that. And whatever strikes your fancy, you just shove it in there. Um, stowage, uh, it, it doesn't matter, it's your notebook, okay. Uh, down in the back, we have all, I have all my oil colors, and we have the latest recipe, okay, for the airbrush cleaner and um, thinner, okay. Now, so that's the notebook, and the color charts are always in there. Now, something else that uh, I acquired some time ago, uh, any artist shop has these and so on, and um, I don't remember if I picked that up or I had that. I think I picked this one up at Michael's, and I had another one in, because I did do oil paintings in the past. And they show by adding the various, uh, you know, uh, adding uh, white, okay, to orange yellow will give you that color there, okay. So you can have an orange yellow, and all of a sudden, ooh, look at that! That looks like Naples yellow now, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. 
And uh, a lot of people know this, but some people do not know this, okay? But the, uh, the nice thing about this particular chart, okay, is the back. And you see these, uh, these, uh, these various shapes here, okay? We've got the complementary, okay? Then we have the tertiary, we've got the tetra, and, the, and so on and so forth. And complementary colors. Now, if we go with the, the purples here, if I can get this, uh, get my fat fingers out of the way, okay? Uh, these colors, you know, straight up and down, you got to, you got your violet, okay, yellow, and so on and so forth. Of course, if you're going to go paler, you got to go paler in your violets. These are complement each other, okay? And then these colors there and there all go together and so on and so forth, okay? Now, uh, this is a lot of mojo and fucking hocus pocus switcher, and I understand that, okay? Um... But they, they are tools that I use, okay? And then that, it needs to, uh, uh, understanding this, okay, will, um, I'm going to pull my pigments out that I use on my Leclerc. And uh, there we are. There's my pigments. And we have Europe dust, beach sand, light dust, African earth, brick dust, and Gulf War sand. Now, I wanted to I want to protect my Gulf War sand. Okay, so when I made up the pigments, okay, for the Leclerc, I used light dust, beach sand, and African earth. Okay, and those are names. Okay, that's all it is. But when we flip the, the containers over, we can see uh, what we're at here. This is, of course, is uh, the light dust. Yep, because remember, we were dustying the Leclerc. This is African earth, and this is beach sand. Now, this is way too yellow. Okay, right off the bat. Uh, you're not going to be able to accomplish a lot of that, but if you mix these two together, of course, it's going to change a little bit. And this uh, light dust has got a some gray tinge to it. Now, like I said, not everybody can see these nuances, okay, whatever. I'm just fortunate. I do have difficulties in browns. <clears throat> I, uh, they thought I was colorblind back in the 70s, okay, but then they, they turn around and give me the test and... Uh, it was light at, at the end of 20 meters, and it was only three colors, and I was calling six. And uh, the, the, the tester comes back. He says, there's only three colors. Where are you getting this white and yellow? Well, come back here and sit in, this, in the chair, and I'll show you. And sure enough, <laughs> like I, I would go uh, white and yellow because I knew I was being tested, right? And the guy turned around and says, you are right, but there's only three colors here. <laughs> white, red, and green. <laughs> <laughs> so I passed the test with flying colors, but he says, yeah, and it would, they, they show you numbers, okay, and there was a number in, in, in camouflage, for lack of a better word, and I couldn't pick them up in some of them anyways, so that's why he decided to test me, but no, I can pick up uh, what's going on here. Now, we, we see some, some red. Now, why did I pick this color? Okay, now we're trying to dust up the Leclerc. You saw the camel fly, uh, pattern on that, and you saw how I was able to sort of um, meld the brown with the beige and so on and so forth, okay? This, okay, uh, was a complementary color because the brown was already on the vehicle. By mixing these three together until I got to where I sort of wanted to go without darkening the vehicle, but melding the brown, okay, pushing it back, Okay, and uh, and at the same time dusting it, and of course uh, freezing that in time, and then you know if I wanted to, and or and come back, or I can just use some straight Gulf sand where I wanted to uh, um, lighten things up if they got a little bit too dark, but I didn't have to do that. Okay, there's areas that I did do at the end, but I mean it's neither here nor there. But these are the three colors I used. 
this being the complementary color. Okay, that's the one I use to 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 to, to tie in my browns with the beige, and uh, these two mix together. And where's my Gulf War sand? Okay, this is the color of Gulf War sand. Okay, and um, this this doesn't work. Okay, um, but we came close by adding this one in there, and we sort of come to that, but we had. A little bit more of this when I was working with the pigments. Okay, it's uh, it is it is what it is. I'm fortunate that I, like I said, I used to do oil painting. Okay, uh, the Bob Ross technique years ago, and so on and so forth. And uh, like everybody else, uh, save your pigments when you're done. And there we've got some there that I that I saved. But that is not the 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 whole uh, the whole intent of this uh, this video. And I'm not going to show you a how to. Because, like I said, I can't walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. But what I will do, okay, is help folks um, as much as I can without having to do that. And here's my uh, my box of oil paints, okay. I think I got 13 in there or, or whatever. And um, this, I'll go through them one by one, okay. This is what I, uh, I came up with and uh, we're going we're gonna to touch in on that. So, uh, we've got some uh, straight lemon yellow. Okay, we're going to zoom in here big so folks can... Uh, I just got to remember where to put them. I used the box as a... And I want this there. Okay, there we go. Right at the box. Okay, so... Uh, Bloody autofocus doesn't work. I know that. We're in hand, so we'll have to manually do that. Okay, we got lemon yellow. And that is a yellow filter, okay, for dark green vehicles. Okay, yellow on green switcher? Whatever. Um, let's look at our color chart here. Um, yeah, yellow on green on the color chart, as you see, uh, uh, they're... they're I don't know how to say this. <laughs> uh, green and yellow. Uh, green and yellow are uh, they're there. We go. They're up, they're in the triangle. Okay. There's your yellow. Or no, that's purple in those three. Okay. Let's uh, let's see where I can uh, where I get the greens. Anyways, it works on and you know uh, I don't need a chart to tell me like. Modelers say, you, you know, and it brings, uh, it pops your green, for the lack of a better word. Okay, so we have yellow. Of course, one uh, I use all the time, okay, is uh, Naples yellow. Uh, there is XF57 from Temi, a buff or whatever. Naples yellow. <clears throat> you got more control, okay. Uh, yellow ochre. We're going to discuss this, okay? This is part of my rust series. We have raw sienna. Uh, we have Indian red. Part of my rust series. We have, uh, Gold Ochre, once again, part of the Rust series. Uh, Burnt Sienna. Uh, it's part of Wettering, but it is uh, Rust series. And uh, you'll see the colors uh, later on. We've got Burnt Umber. Once again, weathering, but in rust, okay? So we're going to put that in the rust. Uh, brown ochre. Weathering. Uh, we have some Van Dyke brown, okay? That's for your panel lines. Black, straightforward. Uh, titanium white, once again, straightforward. 
Romber. Okay, part of the Russ washes. Uh, we have Transparent Maroon. Once again, Russ series. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Persian Blue. Okay, that is Wettering. And we have uh, Permanent Green. Once again, Weathering. So that is that. Those are the old colors I use. Okay, or will be using. Some of them were, uh, uh, like I says, I uh, increased my set. Uh, think of, but I had six before, or I had seven and I bought six or some of that. Uh, neither here nor there. Uh, it was using Michael Rinaldi's, uh, what he was using and so on and so forth. And he does use the, uh, was it MIG or AK products there? The after boom, uh, the black, little, little black tubes and all that. So I might acquire some of that. Now, getting back to pigments, and the question was, Switcher, what did you use to create the rust? Okay, on your Bradley. Not my Bradley, damn, I'm doing it again. Um, <laughs> my M1A2. Okay. Well, we started off, and we're going to flip these bottles for you. We started off with the black. There we go. Okay, we started off with the black, and uh, that created exhaust or soot. Then we applied some of that. Now, that color just happens to be burnt umber. Okay, that is the dark in rust. This particular set from uh, Vallejo, okay, was the uh, the rust set. Okay, got that from uh, Lucky Models Hong Kong or something like that, and it came as a set, and I loved it. Okay, and uh, the other bottle that comes in that set uh, is this one here, and we'll get it. It's it's this one, very very pale. Did not we did not require that yesterday. Okay, so that's why I never use it. But we use burnt umber. Burnt umber. Switcher, didn't you say you had a Windsor Newton color like that? I sure do's. Okay. And uh, there's burnt umber. This is at 10%. Uh, no, these, sorry. Uh, because these are, are rusty uh, rusty things, okay, they're at 20%. And that, 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 uh, I'm making a liar out of myself here. I think... Uh huh. No, uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, ten or twenty. Work your own color out. But um, this is not going to be easy to see on camera. I don't think. Well, perhaps. Okay. So burnt umber. Okay. <clears throat> we'll move that one aside. Black was black. Uh, this one here. Well, look at that. Dark red ochre. Now I do not have. Uh, uh, this particular color, okay, uh, in, uh, uh, this is the second color, nope, this is the second color that went on, slow down a second here, that went on was a burnt sienna, and of course, uh, we have that in, uh, uh, and there we have uh, that color. Camera's not picking up uh, as well as we would like, but um, uh, it's got that that rusty look. Okay, you can see that through the bottle. Okay, and the pigments are are, are, are close to the same. You know, it's you got to remember it's not really really clear here. Okay, so those are two colors. Okay, that came from the Wizard Newton chart, and last but not least here we got dark red ochre. Now this is the stuff that. Um, I could not find uh, in Windsor Newton. And if we bang them to the bottom, they kind of stick to the bottom. Well, sort of. <laughs> this one's darker and this one's lighter. And this is how I finished up. Okay. And it gave it the effect that it did. Now, from 
And this other color here is uh, dark yellow ochre. And yes, this this color is available. Okay, in Windsor Newton. Okay, but that is my uh, my what I call my uh, my rust series, and that was contained on that um, as I showed you there uh, in uh, the other video. Okay, uh, on my weathering station. So, <clears throat> these are the uh, the colors that I have. Uh, get back on your cross. There we go. That I uh, that I have gathered. Okay, uh, from uh, Michael's book. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was called the Life Color uh, Rust Set. A little expensive, not easily attainable. It was in the UK, and of course, uh, conversion from the pound, and then uh, having it shipped. Anyways, it neither here nor there. I don't like buying new products if something else will do. And I went through my Windsor Newton chart, and I came up with uh, some of the colors. Okay, that we're talking about. But this is the the rust set. We have our raw umber here, and we have burnt umber bu. And we're going to flip them on their side there. Then uh, we have a burnt sienna, and this is where that rusty color comes in. Okay, as you can see now, these are the lighting, you know, affects them. Uh, we have raw sienna compared to uh, that bottle wasn't full. I don't use a lot of that, and yellow ochre. Okay, that this series, okay, will create rust. Okay, from the darker, which is your raw umber, okay, uh, down to your uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and uh, raw sienna. Now, why uh, the large difference between these two, between raw and burnt, is beyond me. Okay, but it is what it is. And uh, where there's not a large difference, okay, for uh, when we look at our raw umber and the bird sienna, these are all at 10%. And it was when I went to the Life Color series, okay, uh, that they had, and I saw their paint call outs or whatever they were. And all I did is use my Windsor Newton chart. Man, let's get in there into my yellow reds and browns here okay and picked up the paints now these are in the rush section like i says and i gotta remember i gotta look at them because i like going from dark to sienna and yellow okay gold ochre brown ochre burnt sienna as a wash Indian red, uh, whatever maroon, and Van Dyke brown. And uh, we'll start. Uh, hemp, I got to get these in shot. Okay. We've got some burnt sienna, okay, like I says, uh, which was your rusty color. Indian red. Okay. Works there. We've got our brown ochre. And we've got our gold ochre. Um, this is uh, TM. Something maroon, transparent maroon, I think, or something like that. Um, um, anyways, it works, okay. But yeah, I was using the chart to get to these, okay. And why waste your Van Dyke Brown? 
Okay, uh, I used to use uh, Rombra in the past. Okay. They're similar in color. Okay. But I have more control. I can make... When we're looking at nuances, okay, the Van Dyke Brown, which is a, a true dark brown, okay, from an artist's point of view, okay, uh, it will always be on, on, on a palette because it's, it's a clean brown, if that makes any sense, okay? And uh, um, the nuances won't... Well, it's hard to explain. You have to trust me on that one, okay? Just leave it at that, folks, okay? So that's why the Van Dyke Brown was added in there, and I use it that now for uh, uh, my panel lines and so on and so forth. Uh, the maroon, uh, the transparent maroon is because, um, uh, once again, we're getting into some uh, of the rusts and uh, to create... Uh, it works on certain colors, okay, for creating uh, those rust streaks and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that was there. Uh, the burnt sienna, okay, uh, like I said, uh, it is the what we uh, like to call the rust color. Okay, and I have a big jug of that. So yeah, these are at ten percent. Those little jugs I showed you was at twenty or vice versa. It doesn't matter. Indian red, okay, to highlight. Um, there we have our burnt sienna, and there we have our Indian red. Okay, burnt sienna. Okay, Indian red. Okay, just gives it that little pop. Okay. Uh, then, of course, these two, uh, which is brown and uh, golden ochre. Okay, and it's when we shove the uh, yellow ochre in the mix. Okay, uh, there, there we see the differences. Okay. Uh, this one more is uh, of a dirty color, whereas your gold ochre is exactly that. There's a, you, you see the gold issue to it, and of course you, the brown. You, you're going to expect to see some brown in that. Okay, so that is that, and of course uh, everybody knows this color, and that's Naples yellow. Okay. And um, what else can I talk about? Now we got the Flory washes, but it's um, it always goes down to those charts, folks. Okay, <clears throat> and I can't impress on you enough. Okay, to get them. Anybody that uh, have a difficulty finding them and all that good stuff, send me a PM with your email address if I don't already have it. Okay, but if even if I have your your uh, you know send me a PM switch, I'd like those charts and all that good stuff, and I'll send them to you. Okay, and print them off on glossy paper, and um, it's uh, it's a great reference. You know, uh, we look at these nuances there when we get into our browns and our reds and and, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, like if we want the color to be right there, okay, uh, and it's not coming out. Um, on camera as good as uh, I would like but those nuances of life color which called the rust set okay was exactly that me studying these charts okay and oh there it is oh there's that color and so on and so forth okay uh, da, 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 where am I here we can see oh eh, let's bring that in shot okay we can see some of this stuff how's it you know as it's going on okay, like that color right there okay but it doesn't seem like a lot of transference, but this one here, we can definitely see the, you know, the, it is what it is. For paint duplication, okay, like I said, gun, all, not all gun metals are created equal. And there's a yesterday's chart. Because I had my Tamiya uh, color palette, okay, and when Bob, and there was nothing wrong with Bob's recommendation, folks. I'm not pissing on Bob's parade here. I'm just saying Bob uses this, okay, as a gunmetal. And there's nothing wrong. When I looked at the color swash, 
okay, there was red in it, okay? This is, in my opinion, like I said, gunmetal. This is pure graphite, but Temi X10, not even close, okay? And that was the gist of it, okay? Don't like Temi X10. I use, uh, and this was a happy accident that I found that, and it is what it is. Something that folks asked me for my tires, okay? And uh, this has been mentioned before, but we'll repeat it. There we go. Well, I'm black from Americana. This is an eight ounce bottle. I think I paid six bucks for it. Uh, my Caton submarine was either 54 or 56 and a half inches long. A submarine, a lot of black on there. Uh, you got to go through a lot of these little bottles, okay, to get the job done. And they're not cost effective. This was, okay, and this is beautiful stuff. And that is what I use for my tires. Okay, as well, some folks are calling, how do you get your black? A lot of people use NATO black, which has a gray tinge. NATO black is not black, okay? And they call it NATO black, but when we look at the color swash and all that, it's more of a gray, okay? And I'm glad I never had that. I thought, you know, NATO black is black. And I'm glad I never did the tri-color camo because I would have been wrong. And then going back and looking at the photos okay uh, of uh, the three-tone uh, NATO camo job and yeah that black is not although it's black because of the it's when it's beside the two colors when you take that color by itself okay uh, it would be almost okay don't quote me on this folks okay it's almost uh, that that is uh, that is gunmetal of course okay there's some blue in there <clears throat> but it's black okay for lack of a better for this exercise okay folks it's black this would be uh darker mind you but this would be a nato black okay more on the grayer side than than black okay so not everything is created equal and those color charts i can't emphasize enough pays dividends okay uh, while we're at it, uh, we, we talked about things were rolling off my desk. This is a uh, tip that uh, somebody else brought up. And uh, just uh, taking a toothpick and gluing it to your, your, your thingamajiggies, and uh, they no longer freaking uh, fall on the floor and whatever. This tool right here, like I said, I mentioned it before, this will stab you. You get that in your foot, and it will penetrate, okay? Uh, this thing probably weighs a couple ounces, okay? And that is a... Uh, uh, seam scriber, okay, uh, it could be used as a bearing scraper, it's similar to a bearing scraper, okay, in, uh, in engineering and all that, uh, for uh, scraping away uh, bad, white metal bearings and so on and so forth, it's basically the same thing, but yeah, this implants in your foot, you're going to feel it, okay, so a little bit of a little cocktail stips, and of course I've trimmed the ends off, and yeah, so you just lay it on your bench and it doesn't matter, it just, it just lies there now, so uh, this has been going on long enough, folks, this morning, I hope, Bill, you found this uh, helpful and, and so on and so forth. It is not easy to do. Um, uh, we do not have the same perceptions. Uh, we do not, uh, I'm not talking about Bill, we, I'm talking about people in general, you know, not everybody has the same perceptions. Not everybody sees colors the same way. Uh, not everybody has the same budget and so on and so forth. And a little bit at a time, okay? It is it is what it is. Um, so that is that. And uh, so hopefully uh, folks have found it uh, helpful. And uh, without further ado, this has been going on long enough. Thanks for watching, folks. Switcher, signing off.